You're listening to the Live Out Loud podcast with River Wynn and Michelle Flamer. Hi, River. Hi, Michelle. I swear to God, I don't think I pushed that button. It like knew to do it. The record button. Yeah, the record button. It just all of a sudden started. I was like, okay, here we go. You know why? Because your Zoom just knows we're doing this. Your Zoom is like, we're doing this. Let's do it. The Zoom knows how happy we are. It hears us start laughing. And it's like, oh, here they go. They're going to start another episode. Here they go. Um, We really do have guests coming. They just are not ready for us yet. (laughs) So today... We have a whole lineup of amazing guests. And you know what? It will happen when it's the aligned time with our schedules. But like we have in a, like a roster of amazing guests coming, including people who are in different parts of the world. Yeah. And we're also um, going to introduce a um, my Reiki guy, I think. We're going we're gonna to talk mm-hmm. to Javante. So that'll be cool. Yeah. I have to him and um, get him on our calendar ASAP. So today yes. we're going to keep... It's still February, still the month Uh of amour, of love, or of singledom, as a lot of, you know, people know. Um, As I've been saying, uh, badass singles awareness. Exactly. (laughs) Badass singles awareness. I love it. So what's our topic today? We're going to talk more about dating. Dating, but in the context of deep diving. Yeah dating energy Mm -hmm. how our dating has healed us yes queen patterns the deep diver getting in there i love a good deep dive yeah me too i love it so much (laughs) how much do you love it michelle i i'm sorry guys i'm still um recovering i i have been pausing uh i have been muting myself but that time I didn't catch it. I apologize to the listeners to hear my cough. Yeah, Michelle's still recovering from COVID. Um, yeah, sickness. Yeah. But deep dive, yes, deep dive the feelings, deep dive the whys, deep dive um, how and what, and if there's new ways to do something that's been done for years. I mean, like you and I like to exhaust every possible angle yes yes I think and I've come to realize recently that this is a favorite word of mine the lens through which you look at things I like to put on different lenses your favorite word is interesting is that my favorite word you love saying inter interestingly enough you say interesting a lot interesting <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. I adore you. Um, <laughs> you're simply the best. You're simply the best. Better than, Better than all, all the rest. rest. Okay. So we're deep diving. Dating. dating. Okay. So, but there's like a few different ways you want to go about this, which I liked. There's like the context of which the no nos, like walking into dating, like our, our mindset has to be in a specific way. Right. Well, yeah, I I was, and this kind of came up because I was, as you and I were having a conversation on the phone last night, you know, we were talking about like dating habits and stuff like that. And Mm -hmm. I was thinking about as someone who is um, not actively out there, Mm-hmm. having dates but is open to dating um and looking back at my dating life the last couple of years since my divorce process started and becoming single and all of that um how my my lens because that's my favorite word how yes, my lens is. has changed around dating and how the energy i'm bringing to dating has shifted so much um whereas you know, two years ago, I guess, you know, the beginning of 2021, when I 
I become newly single and I hadn't dated in 10 years and I opened up the dating apps and I was like, <clears throat> oh, this just feels so awful. 100%. <laughs> and as I was interacting with it, my energy was no one's ever going to want to date a 33-year-old single mom who has two kids and a dramatic baby daddy. And my lens of myself was that, like, I wasn't, I was never going to find love. Right. And that dating would be shitty and mm-hmm. that people just wanted to get in your pants and, like, you couldn't trust anyone and dating apps were awful. So, like, the energy that I was bringing to dating was so heavy and so negative mm-hmm. that, that, of, that, of course, there's no way I was going to meet my soulmate. Right. It's not energy. Right. And then in, in contrast to now, you know, two, two and a half years later, um, my energy towards it is so different. Where now I look at dating as an adventure, mm-hmm. an opportunity. Love that. And di- discovery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I know who I am. Mm-hmm. I know my boundaries. I know what I deserve. I know what mm-hmm. I want. And the energy I'm bringing to the table in dating is so different. And it's showing because the people I'm chatting with or connecting with um, and, you know, recently was exploring the idea of a relationship with someone, the caliber of people I'm talking to has changed mm. as well. Well, because when we're, energe- when we're energetically putting ourselves out there, as we know, through the process of our spiritual journey and with therapy is that, you know, when we're manifesting or using the law of attraction, however you want to look at it, everything we say from the minute we, how we approach dating, those, that, that tape that's playing in our head, um, kind of sets the tone for who is going to respond to you. Because one of the things that we said, I think on one of like um, a a podcast a while ago, where is about our non-negotiables and our requirements. Mm. I love how you looked at that through a lens then, which Mm -hmm. was, I better only have things, I better only require or find as a non-negotiable if I'm willing to also meet that ex- same expectation. Yeah. And now you're, yeah. now you're obviously like, if you even looked at that, like I looked back at mine recently and I need to like redo it, <clears throat> but it is so different because. Are you speaking about your list? Yeah. Just like our list, yeah. like they probably, yeah. yours is probably changed as well. Like mine definitely. Yeah. Has. And it's not so much of, the list has changed. It's more about my mindset around the list. And I think it was, it's really comes around to the, to the, for me, at least it's like when I'm thinking about how I want to approach dating, because if you're truly not ready, the apps are going to be a horrible idea. Horrible. You literally have to be in such a mind shift for a successful, creating successful opportunities, I guess, I guess what I want to say. Um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's interesting. And, and on that vein, um, I'll give an example of this, of the, the energy that you bring is the energy that you receive. Yeah. And I'll give an example of this. So when I first got back on, uh, when I first got onto dating apps, when I was newly single, um, I did connect with someone fairly rapidly and what happened, what came from that was that, um, I went on my first date in 10 years and he was sweet and he was lovely and we had a great date and he kissed me on the first date and I was like, oh, glowy and happy and all the things. Right. Yeah. And thinking, oh, you know, like, oh, this is gonna be so much easier than I thought. But there was so much I hadn't even begun to heal yet yeah. around 
the um, the relationship I'd had, I was coming out of, mm-hmm. and the things I had allowed in those in that relationship. Yeah, I didn't understand that I was still calling in the same kind of person mm-hmm. with the energy I was bringing. Yeah, because the energy I was bringing was that I don't deserve love. That's There's it. Like I, I'm gonna have to settle. I'm going to have to take what I can get. Like this is, you know, if if I meet someone like this is it, this is the best I can do. And what came out of that was this lesson because it gave me this opportunity to recognize a boundary, practice a boundary and realize the energy I was bringing because I told this person on our first date, a non-negotiable for me is communication around dating other people. Mm. If you're going to date other people, and more specifically, be physically intimate with other people. That's a non-negotiable for me in terms of communication, (laughs) because I'm like, I'm open to that. Like, obviously, we're not going to put all of our eggs in one basket right after one date. But if we continue seeing each other, I need to know that you're going to communicate about like, sexual safety and who you're seeing and Mm -hmm. communicate about that, be vocal Mm -hmm. about it, because Mm -hmm. I had been married to a chronic cheater for Mm -hmm. so long yeah and as we continued dating because we did continue dating he was sweet he was lovely he was wonderful attentive communicative all these things but I found out that he was seeing other people and didn't communicate to me about it so So I had called in the same kind of person who was charismatic on the on the outside and attentive on the outside but still unable to respect and honor and hear my boundaries. Yeah. And so it gave me a lesson. It gave me an opportunity to say, okay, thank you for this time together. I've enjoyed it. I've appreciated it. No, thank you. Bye. Yeah. And that was the first time I ever chose myself in dating and stuck with my boundaries. And it makes, it makes a huge difference when you, come from a place of want and not need. I mean, yeah, that I think is, I think that's the biggest change. I think when we all get caught up in these avoidant and and anxious and what is it like um, disassociated or what, what not like attachment styles. And of course, you know, we're not, I'm not a therapist, but I know enough about them that if you approach dating in any other way than being totally fine with whatever is coming your way and staying and just staying open, Mm -hmm. that it makes a really big difference because I will tell you that a second date feels very different than a first date. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when we're on a first date, you can't always feel like you, you're you not always going to get the best of that person because we're everyone's in their head when they show up for that first date. Like there's some yeah. dumbass pressure around the first date that, um, yeah, it's, it's impo- almost impossible to show that person who you are. You just hope you've done enough like discovery and you were curious enough to say, can we, you know, do you want to give it a second try? And you also have to be detached from outcomes. You have to yep. be detached from, right. From, and also not take it personally when that person yes. shows you who they are. It's when totally that, dis- okay. that discovery. Yeah. When the discovery continues and you discover that that person is not who they present themselves to be. Yeah. To recognize it, be okay with it, let it go and say, this is not what I want. Yeah, you're cool. And not take it personally. Totally. Like, you're cool, just not for me. Or vice yeah. versa. If they say that to you, you're like, thank you for thank you for having enough self-awareness to know that maybe I'm not your flavor of the month. And I'm cool with that. Like, as long as it's direct. I mean, I know we're going to talk about a little bit, like, things that we've been learning um, on our dating path and I will say like after the divorce I was seeing someone for I think like you know almost a year and there was so much gray area that it was really 
hard for me. And I didn't recognize it at the time, not thinking it's, it wasn't malicious. It was just, it just kind of, it is what it was, right? Like it just was. Mm -hmm. And I know she did the best she could at that time, but I then, and I didn't know that I require, unless Mm I had some dates and had had these experiences, said yes to the experiences because every bad date gets you closer to what you want. Yes. I think that's yes. really important. It's like my dad used to say, it's a sales thing. It's like, it's, it's an, every no, you're closer to the yes. And it's kind of yes. a similar, you know, experience, except you're really taking the time, like your discovery questions and how you put yourself out there you have to know what you're actually trying to extract from that person in order for you to make a claim in the now, not, oh, I bet they have so much potential for mm-hmm. the next 30 years. Like, no, 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 no. Fuck that noise, right? Like We don't date just, potential. We don't date potential. Just noise. Yeah, you're not dating potential. You're dating who that person is showing up in the now. And Mm -hmm. if I didn't have all those experiences, I wouldn't now really have an understanding of I'm kind of a needy little beast in a way, like, which is fine. I I just know myself enough that I need someone who's a really good communicator, Um, Mm -hmm. even if it's not around like how they feel like that's not what I mean. I mean, like they'll text you when you text them back there. There's a cadence. There's like a gentle rhythm of reciprocity. Yeah. Reciprocity, I think is that key word. It's not, it's not like a codependency where it's like, Oh, I'm going to freak out if this person doesn't text me back and I need it. And I like, it's that reciprocity of knowing that someone is being intentional in their Mm -hmm. actions towards you and meeting you in the same place that you're meeting them. You're mutually, you're mutually committed to being interested in each other and getting to know each other and showing up for each other. And there's gifts in every potential person. I mean, when Angela told me this last, I don't know when she last told, I think it was maybe, no, it wasn't January. It was um, last year, probably Mm -hmm. I think somewhere around the summer. And she just said, Michelle, every person that you decide to connect with even just have like a couple of conversations with, they have a chance to either be an expander for you or a lesson. And I was like, Oh, this is interesting. And so when I dated that gal, when I first got out, when with all the gray area, I realized that the couple of gifts that I got from that was really a better understanding because one thing that she really did amazing, which was several things that, got me to the next level for myself was showed me that I'm, I can be really introspective with myself and that Mm. my self-awareness is really good. Whereas in my marriage, it, I didn't show up in that same way. So Mm -hmm. I had a, I had these old beliefs about myself that I'm shallow, that I don't have, I don't reflect on things that I am a wishy-washy. I mean, Mm. so all the things I learned with her that I was more. That I'm not at all how I showed up in my marriage. Like that blew my mind. And that really started me on the path of feeling way more confident in me as, Mm. as a friend as a sister, as a, you know, it shows up in like all these ways. I really, really love the idea of expanders and dating. I really do. I really love looking at dating, shifting your lens. Uh, There's my word again, shifting your lens to, um, to view dating as, like I said, opportunity. It's opportunity to grow. You know, you you get to practice, yep. you know, and I think so many people just take it so personally and they are so emotional about dating because there's pieces of them that still 
are looking for validation, looking for someone to fulfill all their needs, to check right. all the boxes, the oh, one. They're looking for, for the one. And if the yep. person isn't the one, then what's the point? Well, I'll tell you what the point is. In the last two and a half years since I became single, I have dated four people. Yep. Each for just a couple of months, a couple of weeks, a couple of months. And one person I didn't even get to date in person because we live in different countries. Yeah. But each one of those people taught me something so fucking valuable mm-hmm. about myself. Right. And the part the river I am now with that knowledge and that experience is not the same river that I was two and a half years ago. Exactly. And that's the point. Yeah, that's the point. And it's so it's like if I had if I had said two and a half years ago, I'm not gonna date. Right. I don't know that I would have learned the same lessons Mm -hmm. that I needed and had the growth that I needed. Yeah. As as it happened. Right. Um, and so you know, really for me it's it's been interesting to also recognize as I've grown because of dating, also the caliber of people I'm dating. Has also shifted. Mm-hmm. Totally. Well, that but that's the that's the natural order of this. If you're consciously aware of what you want, if you don't know what you want, well, then you're going to literally just be single for a long time because there also you have to make. You have to allow people to show up for that space. And I Mm -hmm. think early on, because it had been like, you know, 30 years since I dated, like Mm -hmm. fucking forever. Um, And I think I had some old beliefs around what dating is supposed to be about. And that's like, Mm -hmm. and I think I was in that same frame of mind of like, or, you know, like, or just trying to make somebody something that they don't fit into, as opposed that to is, allowing yeah. that person to just, like, not chasing, you know, and that kind of stuff. Like, stop the chase. You don't need it. It's not worth any effort. It's because I personally know, and I, I know you know, how you show up with people when it feels organic and when it feels yeah like you're curious enough to like really want to get to know them. And then when they do show up, you're like, Oh, that feels cool. That's awesome. And then like you wake up the next morning, you're like, I wonder if, I wonder if we're like still doing this. You know what I mean? It's like, it's so crazy. It's funny because I, uh, my, my Facebook memories (laughs) <laughs> my Facebook memories is an interesting place sometimes, you know, how they pop up. And it and it's interesting because I'll see these posts. Um, I saw them on the other day and and I realized like I never I would never talk about my relationship, my marriage, my partner on social media very much. I didn't share a lot of pictures, I didn't share a lot about it. Um and but I saw this post the other day where I wrote this like long gushy post about oh I'm so lucky to have this man who you know uh, he did a load of laundry this morning before going to work and it made my whole day easier and I just like went on and on and gushed about how I had this amazing partner who was a great dad and it's like okay yeah he did a load of laundry oh my god that's like the bare minimum but while he was doing a lot of laundry yeah, and what I didn't share on my social media post was that he was probably texting five other women because he was chronically always cheating on me the entire oh, relationship from, from the minute I found out I was 11 weeks pregnant to the end of our relationship, just constant. And so here I was putting out this front on social media of like, Oh, this great guy, because he did this one bare minimum thing. And now it's like, I looked at that post and I just laughed and I was like, oh, little river, little river, little river. 
That's right. You took... Oh, I just want to give you a big hug because you deserved so much more than that. And now River at 35, almost 36 years old will never accept the bare minimums ever again. Yeah. The, the bar thing, is so high. <laughs> some, other, some other things we have to like learning what to ask for mm. like setting a coffee date up. Like this one gal that I went out with, oh my God, this was such a hot mess. I don't know if you remember this. It was just last, it was like, I don't know when it was, but anyways, it was, uh, this girl had just gotten out of a relate, like her partner cheated on her with like, you know, she's mid forties with a 22 year old from the gym. Mm -hmm. I remember this. Yeah. And she literally was a hot mess. Like. She needed, she really needed to be there with like a best friend with mm. like a confident, like not on a first date. I was, I just couldn't believe it. So things transpire in a way to allow you to say, oh, I need to ask this question and this question. So you just become better. Like when you finally are ready to like put yourself out there again. It's like, it's nice because you, you have an opportunity to do it different each time and get better mm -hmm. results. And then you're healing and then you find someone who you really enjoy. And just by them saying, I choose you every morning heals you in a way that was uncompre It was uncomprehensible for me seven months ago. Oh yeah. I mean, the most recent person that I was in conversation with um, and, and just deeply, like truly, I, I adore this person, really, truly adore this person. And we were in conversation, you know, part of the winter, um, and I guess it's still winter, but part of this winter around, um, you know, potentially having a relationship. And that experience was so healing for me because, of, because the way this person showed up for me was respectful. Mm -hmm. He was communicative, kind, intellectual. We connected on so many levels. And then when we got to the space where we realized it just isn't logistical and our lives are on such different paths, our relationship just wasn't going to happen. And mm -hmm. we made that conscious choice of like, yes, we could make this happen, but is it really right for our individual paths? Right. We were able to have that conversation with so much respect and dignity and love. Mm -hmm. And then part, part ways, quote unquote, um, but we're still friends. Mm -hmm. And this person sent me this message the other day and, and just was like, I just want you to know how proud I am of you as a person and all the things that you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm just grateful that we get to be friends still. And it blew my mind because it was so healing mm -hmm. to have that experience from start to finish and know that we didn't come out of it hating each other. We didn't come out of it with negative feelings towards each other. It's just that experience was so different than mm -hmm. any other dating experience I've had. And it's been this progression. And so I had this moment of realizing coming out of that, looking at my dating history. And I realized that you and I were talking about this last night. Like I had this realization that in my entire dating history, since I was a teenager, I haven't had a type of person yeah. in terms of like physical looks, yeah. like background, anything like that. Like I have dated a vast range of people. Yep. Me too. But I came to recognize in dating the last two and a half years that I had a dating pattern mm. and what my pattern was every single person I had dated and the person I married, all of that, they had one thing in common. And that was, they were all emotionally unavailable. Mm -hmm. And that felt like safety to, to me because yeah. that's how I grew up mm -hmm. with emotionally unavailable parents. Yeah. And so my dating the last two and a half years, the, the healing in it has been that I'm healing myself separate from dating. And then also in the context of dating, I'm healing because as I've gone through these experiences, the caliber of people have changed because I have changed because I love myself mm -hmm. and I have a secure, I have a secure attachment now within yep. myself to myself. And so the people I'm dating 
are now becoming emotionally available, healthy people. Yeah, it makes a big difference. I mean, granted, I think everyone's putting their best foot forward. And I think that you have to know, you have to sort of just know yourself enough in that space where when someone does come across your past where you're like, huh, I need to like, I need, I just want to like check. I want to see what this looks like or, you know, how this kind of goes because there is like a really uh, like a comfortability with them, whether it's, wow, we probably had, and we're probably soul, you know, ties to each other. And there's just like this internal comfort, comfortable place, but that you don't necessarily feel with a lot of other people. And so it's just mm -hmm. one of those moments again, where you have to be really aware of mm -hmm. what, what you did. Like I just did energy. I did good yes. conversation. I mean, I don't have a type really. I mean, they're all looks, they've all looked so different. Gender. Same. I, I mean, yeah. Same, all same gender. They're all cis women, but yeah. just, they look, they're so different. All of them. Na in yeah, I, nationality, whatever. Yeah. Same. It's just been such a vast spectrum of backgrounds and different mm -hmm. types of people. And it, it, it's just like when I would meet them, like there would be some kind of um, intrigue. Mm -hmm. It's an intrigue. I like that word for this. An, an intrigue yeah. where you meet someone, their energy speaks to you and you have to kind of follow that. You yeah. kind of have to follow that and see where it goes. Mm -hmm. Because uh for me, it's always been, this is the next lesson. This is the next expansion. This is the next up leveling. And so now in my dating life, it's like approaching it that way. I, I don't feel this dread about dating that a lot of people are expressing right now of, oh, you know, it's, it's a dumpster fire out there and the dating apps are trash and humans are trash. <laughs> like that's what you're hearing a lot right now. Like in the dating world, it's just, people are exhausted and they're tired and it's like, Okay, yeah, there is an element of like, yeah, the way we date socially has changed a lot. And there's an yeah. exhaustion in, in swiping and messaging and all of that. But I just see it as fun. Yeah, I see it as opportunity. And I'm excited about it. I'm glad you are. I mean, I will tell you when, when you come across somebody that you just dig, it's, it's freaking so fun yeah I mean it's really yeah. fun to like peel back the layers see how each other like you know maneuvers through conversations and I mean it's just it's really cool it's 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 interesting I mean some of them have been a hot mess but for the most part it's cool I don't mind yeah and I I think uh, I think the biggest piece for me right now is like the letting go of attachment to outcomes. That's it. I'm telling you when I say like, I'm excited. I'm excited for what's coming, but I'm just so like, I mean, two years ago, I was attached to all the outcomes. I was writing the story before I had ha had known anything. And so, yes, the future, future planning, meet future someone, thinking. have a date, you know, and it's, we were talking about this last night too, like uh, the roller coaster chase. Yes. You know, the highs and lows of emotion Ugh. in dating of like, oh, this gave me a thrill. I'm going to chase it. And then it's like this low, 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 low. Is this person yeah. going to text me back? And it's like, if that's the kind of energy I encounter in, in the people I'm dating, I'm not interested. I don't want roller coaster. I want steady, calm, intentional. And that's really kind of like where my gauge is at right now. Like, how does it feel? How does this person's energy feel? <laughs> I know it's, it's, tr it's so true. And then they'll text you and say, you know, when someone like you actually like, and is actually on your level or um, is literally healing you and you did, they don't know it at the moment because this is just organically how they show up. And you're like, Oh, this is what that's supposed to feel like. Uh, Oh, you oh mean, this is what it's like to date a healthier person. <laughs> my God, I'm not I'm not crying every day and like 
flipping out emotionally. I over mean, analyzing texts. Right. Over analyzing oh. lack of text. Right. Over analyzing space of time between text yep. messages. Yeah. Letting like waiting to hear your phone go off and like plant like your whole day revolving around hearing from that person. That's right. Oh, and no. you know what? I'm sorry, but when you're dating somebody and you're actually really wanting to like, you've established that, Hey, let's see where this goes without mm -hmm. all that stuff. You, you have to show up. Like you have to be a good morning text. You need to be a good night texter. Like it's really important to establish some consistency um, when you maybe not, you don't see them every day when maybe it's, maybe it's once a month, maybe it's once every Long six distance, months. Yeah. I mean, like there are people that I, you know, follow on TikTok or Instagram or whatever, who are in these like four or five year long distance relationships. And mm -hmm. they're always saying like, what's the most important part is their communication. Like, and just well, letting them know, like, Hey, I'm going to run to the grocery store. Like you think that might not be an important text, but it is important. It's nice for that person to be like, oh, they're thinking of me and I know what they're doing. I think that's especially important in long distance relationships. Cause I will say, you know, one of our favorite podcasters, Sabrina Zohar, yep. <laughs> one of our favorite, you know, Damn, she's so babes awesome. who talks about dating, you know, that she work. talks a lot about this, about the, about the texting thing. Um, and the anxiety people get about texting. And it's like, the reality is some people are not daily texters and that's okay. But what's important is to have the conversation around your, your communication styles. Yeah, if you're a phone no person, right if you're, it just are you a phone call know. person? Are you a texter? Do you want to do FaceTime? Like, mm -hmm. and, and understanding each other's styles and then also compromising a little bit about it. If one person is not a daily texter and the other person is that person saying, Hey, when we text more often, it makes me feel more connected to you. And I appreciate that. And then that person has the opportunity to show up for you, even if it's maybe oh, a little bit outside of their normal. 100%. And then you also understand that if they're not texting you every hour or every morning, that doesn't mean that they're not choosing you. That's right. That's right. I mean, so it's just, it, but it's important. Like you said, it's like, you just have to establish whatever is the expectation around texting, communication, day to day. How often do you, we make a plan to have dinner in person, hang out at each other's, do we, do we hang out at each other's apartment? Like all these things, you know, houses or whatnot, or even if you have kids, like what does that expectation look like around when you have the kids at your house? Like now tell me those expectations because we all want to stay present with our children, but also if we're enjoying somebody, right? We don't want to let them think otherwise. We want to let them know like, hey, um, I'll be available after bedtime. Cool. To have to talk to you in a few hours or whatever it is. And I think, it's yeah. just, again, it's just clarity and communication is fucking sexy. It is so hot. So smoking hot. Give me clarity. Tell me you dig me and you can't wait to chat with me, but I just, you just have to chat with me later. You know what I mean? Like all good, like zero yes. animosity, zero worry, like all cool. And then follow that up. Cause if yes. it becomes, I want to do that later then it becomes breadcrumbing, maybe a little gaslighting and it just turns sour like really fast. Yes. I, like an example of this for me, <laughs> like I go, going back to the texting and, and in this vein is, you know, like my, the parent of my children um, would send me daily text messages during times of the day where I was busy with our children. Yeah. Wanting, wanting validation, Wa not checking on me, but wanting validation um, and then if I didn't respond, would be so angsty and upset that I wasn't validating and texting oh. back. And in my head, I was like, 
you literally saw me a couple of hours ago. You know that I'm taking care of our children. You know that right now I have a nursing baby and a toddler that's running around the house and I'm picking up my stepchild from school and I don't have time yeah. to sit here and text you back about something that is unrelated to what I'm doing right now. And I'm going to see you in a couple of hours. And so it was this really terrible, you know, cycle for us. Um, and then, you know, my most recent conversation about dating with this person, connection with this person, it was, if I didn't respond because I was busy with my children, this lovely human would literally, when I finally came back to respond, I'd be like, Hey, so sorry. Like I had some stuff going on with the kids. They would say, you know what? I knew that you were busy with the kids and I did not expect a response. I'm so glad to hear from you now. How are the kids doing? Exactly. That's what it allows though. That's the space that you want to allow to breathe in between that, that if it's really for you, you really don't have to do anything other than set the expectation, be totally honest with that person. If you can just be honest then hopefully if they're a cool person, they're going to be honest. Like you're going to lead that maybe, but you're going to find honesty coming back your way. And it, it just allows for so much peace. Like, so on that topic, then, yeah, sucks. Yeah. yeah, it does. So I would say then, okay, so let me ask you this. What are your top, let's do top three, top three values in dating, what are you looking for? Top three. Like, what are you wanting to see from someone? Your top three. Yeah. Um, a good sense of humor, clear communication, and the ability to set expectations, like mm. to what we want going forward. Yeah. And that could be yeah, for that, two weeks. Yeah. That could be for two months. That could, I mean, it sets the tone. It's whatever will help you build foundation regardless of time because I'm not thinking about the time anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm just literally present in the day of it. So all I'm doing is focusing on the 18 hours in my in front of me. Yeah. I'm not focused I, on a hundred hours, you know, a hundred years ahead. Yeah. I like that you said expectations. Mm -hmm. And I was actually having a conversation with a guy friend earlier today who's out dating and we were talking about expectations and how oftentimes people will put on their dating bio what their expectations are, what they're looking for. But then once you start talking to them, they don't actually understand what their own expectations are. And so yep. the context here was that we were talking about um, how to clearly present to people, um, especially as a dude, that you're looking for casual connections that are respectful, mutually enjoyable, all of that, um, that you're not looking to establish a relationship right away. Um, but you're open to, in the future, if if you connect with someone and you vibe with someone, to can exploring relationship. Yeah. Um, and his experience has been that, like, women will say that on their bio, but then in, in conversation, it becomes very clear that they're still just wanting to immediately make a relationship, like a full blown relationship, or they have a lot of hangups around the casual thing. And so it just becomes like very clear that their that their expectations are not understood by themselves. Whereas he understands his expectations and he's so transparent about it. No, and I completely. love that you said that as a value, because it's so important to understand what your own expectations are. A hundred percent, because I will tell you in the lesbian world, like they love meeting as friends first. I don't know where this started, but, and, and granted, I, I love, I love the idea of falling in love with my best friend, but guess what? They become your best friend when they show up like your fucking best friends. Like, mm -hmm. you're not coming. Like, I don't need more friends, truthfully. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I have enough friends. So I've, I'm more about like, I'll ask them, are you looking because you want to, like, are you looking as friends, like you want to fall in love with a best friend? Or are you genuinely just building community? Because 
Mm. That's two very different like ways. That's of a reading. great question. It does. Yeah. It gets, it's a good, it gets an interesting response because it makes them have to think for a second. Like, no, I just, and, and most of them, I just chose that because it feels safe. That's so interesting because that's something like you'll hear a lot in conversations between heterosexual women, like oh. who, how, who are mothers with children. Like I was thinking about this, like oftentimes I've heard some of my female friends who are straight say things like, or, or I've talked about it. My, my, like my best friend and I, when we were younger, we used to talk about this all the time. Like, can the two of us just get married and, and raise our children together? Right. And I think there is like a piece within women where we're like, we're looking for safety. We're looking for nurturing. Right. We're looking for communication. We're looking for ease, for flow within Which our relationship. shows up as friendship. We have in our friendship. That's right. And so that makes sense that like, so especially, especially women who are maybe later in life, lesbians are just coming out like that. They would make that connection of like friendship equals love. That's right. And I believe that there is a little bit of that, but you also have to find, you want to feel passion for that person because I don't need friends. So you're like, you're looking for the passion that can match friendship and sort of, but the friendship part is only after you're building foundation because at first it can just be kind of sexy. Someone slides into your DM and you're like, whoa, what is that? Or they're like, or they're forward on an app and you're like, nice way to shoot your shot there. You know what I mean? Like it's one thing to get someone's attention. And then you look at them and you're like, okay, they're, they're kind of cute. I'm kind of curious now, but the friendship piece is this calm space that just like I feel when I'm with my besties that like, I can be myself. I can mm -hmm. say what's really on my mind. I don't have to hold back. I mean, you withhold certain level of obviously of, of like connect, like feelings and stuff, because a part of you is like, it's too soon to feel that. But then you read stories all the time where they're like, nope, we knew three days later, we were yeah. going to the courthouse to get married and they're still married. Yes. That happens all the time. And <laughs> I think there's a two balance things. though. Yeah, two things. First of all, I, I kind of wanted to go back like to the friend thing. You know, I adore my friends. I adore my friends, right? And I love the peace and the safety and the connection I have with my friends. But also I don't want to sleep with my friends. 100%. 100%. So I'm not looking to date right. looking for a best friend. Right. Because I have that. Right. I don't need that. But if your partner becomes the per one of the people in your life, which which we hope they should yes. be, like, where you're like, this is a safe place for me to land at the end of the day. I yes. had a crappy day. This person's going to nurture me because you have that foundation set. But then you're like, but tomorrow morning, I can't wait to call Michelle because I really need to download this shit. Like, it's just a different... Yes. It's, it's like a, different a different relationship. Right. But it still yes. has to be nurtured and safe. And you still have to feel like you can be your whole self, which means you are sharing all of yourself with this person, like your girlfriends. Yeah. It just shows up in a totally different way. Exactly. And then the second thing I was going to talk about was like the time frame piece. Yeah. Because I recently had an interaction with another podcaster on Instagram and this wonderful woman um, shares all about her journey of like going, coming out of divorce and really deep diving her, her personal healing, like really getting into it. Wow. Therapy, like really doing the intentional work, IFS, all the things yeah. um, and just really committing to it. And I resonated with that so much because that's, you know, what I've done. But then also still like going out and dating and like learning from dating and then coming to this space where she loved herself so much and knew so much what she wanted. And of course, she wasn't perfectly healed because none of us are. And she talks about that. But then right. she got back on the dating apps and swiped, saw this one guy and was like, I want to date this man. Wow. And they started dating. And he was the same way. He has, he was someone who had intentionally done so much work on himself 
and she could see it and how she how he showed up. And she said, within a month, we knew that we were going to get married. Isn't that sweet? And people, so many people were commenting on her feed about how, you know, she wasn't healthy because she married someone that she had met, you know, a month ago and all these things. And it was like, time is irrelevant if they when you're had, a healthy person. If they had eight hour conversations for those first couple of weeks, like every night, eight, like you can get through a lot of stuff. I mean. Well, and I actually commented and I said, I said on there, I said, you know what? I, you know, I spent 10 years with someone it's only to realize I barely knew this person. Isn't that the craziest? And then you meet somebody in three weeks. Later, and then you, you yeah, exactly. And you know them and you, you, you know, their childhood, you know, their wounds, you know, it's their because healing. They're like, showing you know up with you. And they know themselves. And that's yes. what they're bringing to the table. That's right. Yep. And they don't, and, it, and like you said, like, we're all in the process of healing something, you know, and it's more about, it's, in, it's, it's lovely how people show up differently with different people because of where you're at in the healing space, where they're at on their journey. And it, it can be the coolest and the easiest thing on the face of the earth. Or you can just push against it and force it and try to chase it down and make it something, you know, but two people have to be in it together. Like, I yeah. can't, I can't just do it on my own. I can't, like, you can't have a relationship on by yourself. I mean, yep. I tried that in my marriage and it didn't, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. And it's just like, you know, you know, there's so much healing you can do on your own. And then there's also a lot of healing that kind of has to happen in the container of a relationship. Yes. Because it's the only time where you're mirrored or triggered yeah. in a way. Yes. And if they're holding, if, if you have someone that's holding space for you in those moments or just being able to process it through with you, then it becomes a really healing space. And that's, yes, that's what you end up craving. That's what you end up yearning for. That's what you end up longing for is mm -hmm. space of safety. Like you were saying about all these straight women, like it, they just want safety and how that represents and shows up as a friend. But you're right. Women just want to feel safe, which means we have to show up um, consistently with the consistency of actions. Everything has to match. And you also have to understand what safety feels like within yourself. Totally. Because if you don't know what safety feels like within yourself, you're not going to be able to recognize when you're unsafe with others. Right. It's so true. And it's like, I, I'm just not afraid to be single. I'm not anymore. Like no. I, I was a little worried about it for a bit because I just love being in a relationship. But I don't want that same relationship. I want a new, I want a relationship that co we co-create the relationship together. I, I was thinking about this because I keep coming back to looking at my dating history because I, I was thinking to myself last night, you know, that first person that I dated coming out of my relationship, if I had self-abandoned and stayed with that person from the space of believing that I wasn't going to have anything better. Um, where would I be now? And recognizing that each time I've dated, it's only gotten better. Mm -hmm. Has me so thoroughly convinced that I am going to receive exactly what I want and need when it's the right time. 100%. And so I am just staying open, uh -huh. receiving, yep. choosing myself, yes, and genuinely loving my life and where I'm at and embracing it. Mm -hmm. It's pretty dope. I mean, 
it's really, really cool. I know people get really scared to like do that shadow work and to do, mm. but I'll tell you that if you're genuinely listening to this right now and you're single and you haven't done that piece of it, don't complain that you're not attracting the people that you want. You have to do this freaking work. You have to. If you yes. don't, otherwise you're just getting fucking lucky if you find somebody that just rocks your world and it works and blah, 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 then that's fantastic. I'm so glad that I'm proven wrong in that way. That's okay. Yeah. I, but I will tell you 90% of everyone on an app right now, I'll probably say like 40% of those people, which is a big percentage, have not done any work. And it shows in the yeah. way they write, the, they write it or the lack of writing anything. Like it mm -hmm. is so annoying when they put one picture up, They, but it's telling. It's like, wow, you don't even want to put any effort into this. Or when they say things like, this one always cracks me up, oh, yeah. cracks me up so much. They'll be on the dating app. They have a profile yeah. dating app, right? Yeah. And they fill out all their information, but then yeah. their bio says, don't know why I'm here. Um, wish that, you know, where are all the good women at? Um, you know, uh, be the one to make me delete this piece of shit app. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. Do you, do you really think that people are going to be trying to match with you with that kind of energy? Cause that is so negative. Yeah. Like, I think, I think the whole indecisive thing again, that just, I realize now for myself, like, and I expect this from my friends and luckily I have really amazing communicative friends. Obviously that is in my own design and my friendships mm -hmm. design, but like, I can't have anyone who literally just can't talk to me. Like, and mm. I, and, and, and it's fine. I get it. Like I'm really self-aware. Like I'm really self-aware. And I love when people just say, I'm, I really want to work on that. And I love that. Mm. That's like attractive, right? Like, I don't need the other person to be so self-aware like me, because if it's in their journey, if it's part of what they want to learn, then they'll learn. Like they will just yeah. through, through time. It's more about the choosing of like being in this or not. Like I just mm. really know that. I just desperately need fucking clarity. I can't do, I can't do push pull. I can't do uncertainty. I just can't. I mean, I'll take a risk for the unknown and that's totally cool, but that's all that you're getting at the end of the day. If that's, if, if that's it, then peace out. Have a great one. Yeah. I think for me, thinking about the things that are the most important for me, um, you know, knowing someone who knows themselves yeah which so is, is part, part, part of, of that clarity these are your three values that you're yeah to yeah okay, yeah cool. so you know clear and clarity is part of knowing yourself so like someone who knows themselves yeah someone who is growth oriented heck yeah very important for me that's number four definitely for me yeah and of course like there's so many more that's important but like these are my core yeah. like top three you know but then I really realized um, through connecting with this last person I connected with that a really integral one for me is someone who gives me the space and holds the space and sees and loves my bigness mm -hmm. because I have a big energy. Yes, you do. And I've always had a big energy. And as a child, it was very boxed in, repressed, denied, pushed down. And part of my healing journey has really been to connect with, reparent, and step into my big energy in a big, big way. And I realized in my dating history that most of the people I had dated um were drawn to my energy and then wanted to box it in. Yeah, because there's, well, there's a real mix with you. It's like they can have this big person energy. You have this fire within you. You're like super 
um, motivated, you are outspoken in all the right ways. Like you're up, you're, you stick up for the underdog, but there is the other side that a lot of people don't get to see because they don't make it past day one with you is you also need a soft place to land that you really love being a woman and like being in that divine feminine softness at times. Mm -hmm. And you need a, a strong enough partner that is okay with both sides of you in all those ways and learns to navigate through that or is able to have a conversation with you and go, um, or just ask you like, Hey, what energy are we feeling today? And you're like, I'm in a soft girl energy. Okay, cool. So are we going to watch a movie? Are we going to like, you know, or I'm in my big girl energy. My big girl panties are on. We're going for a 10 mile hike, or we're going to do some type of project that's going to like encourage, you know, and increase our abundance or whatever. Right. Like, Yes. And then also like, I'm that person who is very potentially going to disappear for 24 hours out in nature and meditate by myself and yeah. attend in the woods. And they and have, have to a be spiritually totally okay with that. Right. <laughs> like I need a lot of space. Like, and, and it's so interesting that you say that. And I love that you see that because it relates to like, in my astrology, I am an Aries and Taurus cusp. Mm -hmm. So I have this Taurus, grounded, earthy, feminine, softness, luxury, all of that. Totally. But then I also have this Aries passion, drive, motivation, get shit done, big, you know, big thinker, all of that. And then my rising sign is Scorpio, which Scorpio is big mystery energy. Yep. Is... Um, a closed aura presenting to the world. Maybe it's a so, black widow. It, yeah. And so it is just this, dyna I'm this dynamic energy mm -hmm. that is a lot. And I was told when I was growing up that it was a lot. But you're and not now, a lot. That's, that's what's the thing. funny. I'm not too much and nope. I'm owning it and I'm just being myself. And so, you know, in this, this connection with this last person, what really came up was the recognition that when people have been drawn to me and wanted to date me, they were drawn to this big magnetic energy, but wanting the soft girl, but only wanting the soft girl and wanting the big magnetic energy to leave. And for me to be the soft little wifey, the soft little stay at home homemaker, yeah. the soft little raising the children, being there when you come home, making the dinner, all of that. But without creating space for... I am not a housewife. Nope. I love to take care of my home, but I'm not staying home. Right. No, I mean, it's true. It's like this person really has to have their own life and feel really confident in their skin because first of all, they have to be a really good communicator just to say to you like, okay, what's this week look like? I mean, you're, you're, you are very good about saying this Saturday, I need to go to nature. Like, I'm mm -hmm. feeling it. I'm getting extra cranky, like however it shows up for you, right? Like, oh, I'm scattered. I need to get grounded, like whatever that means. Yeah. And um, I think, again, it just comes back to knowing who you are. I mean, as a good friend, I know exactly who you need. And as, as I can say to you, you could probably write my bio better than I write. Mm -hmm. my bio. <laughs> yeah. And that's because with our friendships, we learn what each other wants, desires, needs. And not only that, like we all have our own perception of who this person should be and like physically what they have to look like and be and the money they need to make, like all these fucking things that guess what? At the end of the day, none of it fucking matters. If the they list. can't be consistent, if they yeah. can't communicate, if they can't, if they're not growth mindset, or if they don't understand how to create expectations, like for themselves. The list piece, I was going to mention this earlier and it slipped my mind because we changed topics, but the list piece, my list has changed because I had this moment and you and I talked about this in this, in the, you know, this last fall, my list changed because it became less about what does the person look like? 
what do they do? And it became about, what do I want a relationship to feel like? Feel like, exactly. So then identifying what I want a relationship to feel like. So what are the qualities that a partner has to bring to the relationship in order for it to feel that way? What are the qualities I need to bring to the relationship in order for it to feel that way? Am I doing those things for myself? Right. Because the thing is, when you want, when you're allowing to want a relationship and not need a relationship, all those negotiable, all those non-negotiables and those requirements kind of don't matter because you're like, hold on, I fill my own cup. I make my own money. I don't need anyone to pay my rent. So I'm not looking for sugar mama or sugar daddy, whoever you are. Um, You literally just need the person to be your fucking person. Like, yes, that's it. That is where like the adding value piece, like they're adding, like I go out and I'm on my Vespa and I'm like going to take myself on at my own date. But if I had the person who made me feel all those things, it would just amplify the fun. Yes. So yeah. How does it feel? Yeah, it just How changes. does it feel? Yeah, it changes exactly because we're in a want, not a need. Yeah, that's that the key right there. God, if you're on a if you're on the apps and desperate for a relationship, it's good, you're not you no. Know. It's a disappointment after disappointment because of just in the tweak of how you're showing up for yourself in that moment. That's it. Has has literally nothing to do with the people on those apps. They're there because mm-hmm. they want to be. Like you have yep. no control over any of them. You only so have I would, control yeah. over yourself. Exactly. And so like, I, I would tell like, I'm not a dating coach. But like, if someone was asking me about like, oh, I'm thinking about dating, what, what you know, what should I think about? I'm like, I would tell someone, think about your own energy. Mm-hmm. How do you perceive dating? How do you perceive relationships? Yeah. What are you bringing to the table? What are you doing for yourself that you're wanting someone else to do for you? Are you doing that for yourself? Take a look at your list. Throw out, it's really important to me that he is six foot. Throw out, it's really important to me that he makes six figures. Throw those superficial things out. Take a look. How do you want to feel is in he, a relationship? Is, is, he, is he tall enough to make you feel small? Like, like there might be a different shift. Like, I just like, maybe they like tall people for whatever age. Yeah, yeah, totally. Like, and and also like maybe, right. And like, okay, but maybe instead of asking a person if they make six figures, maybe find out if they're happy doing what they do. Yes. Like yes. That, might, that might make up for the additional 30, 40 K because you're getting a partner who literally loves what they do. I was thinking about that today. I was, as I was like, out doing what I love to do this weekend. You know, I taught my, one of my first art classes right. yesterday and, and I just, it lit me up in such a beautiful way. And I was just like, mm-hmm. you know what? Um, one of the things on my list had been, I want to be with someone who is entrepreneurial, who is creative. And as I started thinking about why that matters to me, well, in the terms of entrepreneurial, like I like to have a freedom and flexibility in my schedule as mm-hmm. someone who is an entrepreneur that's important to me. Mm -hmm. So in being with someone who's a partner, I look at my, my marriage and I never saw that person because that person worked 50 to 60 hours a week. And so it was, you know, a few hours here and there and passing. So, and and looking at entrepreneur, it's, it's not that I want them to own their own business per se. It's that I want to spend time with them. Or they can work remote. So this way there's flexibility in their schedule, yeah. so maybe they don't go home right away because you, you don't have the kids. Maybe it's a weekend and they can stay till Monday because they can do a conference call from your place and then maybe head out. But there's there's just flexibility around their job. So how does that yeah. feel for you, right? Like, exactly. Again, and then the create, yeah. You're, you're creating a new list in a sense, but yeah way more flexibility, way more flexible around, again, about how you feel with this person. Yeah, how it's they going feel. to the roots. 
Yeah, going to the roots of what it is that you're wanting yep. and how that feels versus the superficial things. I mean, and then, you know, having the expectations around parenting, having the expectations around sex. If you mm -hmm. can talk about a simple like, hey, this is what I like to do on the weekend. And I always have a like if it's a guy that you're dating or whatever, like, hey, I have a boys pickup game every Sunday. Cool. Michelle and I record our podcast every Saturday. Like that's okay for people to come with their things. They just have to be able to like verbalize it because if you can't even verbalize the day-to-day -day bullshit, like the normal stuff, how are you going to verbalize what expectations around sex looks like and how that shows up for both of you and, and all that kind of thing. And if you're compatible or if you're not. So here's an interesting thought on that topic. Yeah. When it comes to sex, knowing yourself sexually is really important really when important. you're dating really important especially as women because there's so many women who don't feel comfortable with their own bodies and they don't know what they like sexually or maybe if they were like me they were trapped in a marriage where sex wasn't blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know you went so long without it and it's totally. like knowing yourself sexually having a relationship with your body yeah is important in dating as well because then you're able to show up at the table to have that conversation. I, 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 exactly. Like for me, I, I think about, wow, I haven't, I haven't had, you know, relations for a while now. And so it's important to recognize like for myself, I don't know if I'm like super amped into day by day, like, or what that looks like yet. Because I just haven't had it in that in so long in a steady fashion. And if you're in a long distance relationship, then of course, then it's like you are going to, in a sense, because there's limited time that you're actually spending mm -hmm. with one another. But it's still it's still an important conversation around. I honestly don't know how I, I like. Are you cool with me figuring that out? Because. I don't know what my drive is at this point. You know, I know I want to have a drive. I want to be explorative. Like I want to like see how and what is good for me today that didn't work for me back then when I was really young in my twenties or mm -hmm. even maybe showed up in relationships. But like I, if I've grown as a person, I can only imagine that, you know, now I'm in my fifties, my drive might be different, but I'm open to like being just open to all of that. Right. And just allow yeah. pleasure at the end of the day. And I think that's what it all comes down to when you're building through communication, that safety piece, that trust piece. And mm -hmm. if you're just not in tune with yourself, you don't realize that all of those things are going on in the background while you're just trying to have fun and get to know somebody. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Could have said it better. Beautifully said. <laughs> oh, thank you. So anyways, but yeah, it's, it's, it's all so fascinating, isn't it? It's interesting. It really is. It's interesting through your new lens. <laughs> 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 It is. It uh, is. I will say when, when you do connect with somebody, don't fucking run away from it. Like lean yeah. into that. Just tell them, Hey, I'm really nervous because I've just like, it's okay. Like be vulnerable in dating also, because by not having attachments and just showing up and vulnerable, you're healing yourself by just speaking your truth and learning yeah. to speak our truths will make you such a good partner at some point when that person is the right person and you've like been speaking your truth for four months and it's a better habit now and you're just getting used to it and it's like when you don't speak your truth it feels wretched it's almost painful it's self-abandonment and and you know you know on the other side of that like also speaking your truth around your boundaries and what doesn't work for you and what doesn't feel good because yep. then you're choosing yourself. And it's like, when you come into a relationship, like those dynamics are going to be in a relationship. You're going to have to talk about your truth, 
whether it feels good. And sometimes it doesn't feel good to talk about your truth because you're worried that might hurt the other person's feelings. But you know that you have to speak your truth and communicate and work through things. And I'm sorry, like you can forget the whole what color are your eyes? When were you born? Like get through the deep, like here's my list of five things. Can we talk about these right now? Like just come out of the gate. Like don't waste anybody's time. It's okay. Yeah. Like, just ask, like, find out what color their favorite color is, you know, a, a, like five days later or whatever. I don't, or just like a cute text every now and then, like, hey, I was just thinking, I was looking at this new sweater I have, and I just was curious, like, I realized I didn't know your favorite color. What is that? <laughs> You're so <I> smooth. Mean, <laughs> so smooth. Uh, but, you know, it's true. It's like, I just, I don't know. I come out of the gate swing and I'm like, I'm, I'm like seeing where they land. What are they kind of come back as? Like, it's kind of a fun psychological game of like dodgeball. Do you know what? I love talking about dating with you because you're a man or you're a generator in human design, right? Yes. And yeah. I'm a manifester in human design. And it was so fascinating because um, Aaron Claire Jones, who is like one of the human design people and her podcast yep. is just absolutely lovely i wish i could remember the name of it sometimes so i could share it. maybe we'll share it in the show notes or something but she did a live webinar right before valentine's day talking about love and dating through the the signs the types oh fun and i, I that asked up. yeah i asked a question on the live because i'm a manifester and we are people who initiate yeah and i'm also a woman who doesn't want to have to initiate a relationship mm -hmm. so I asked the question I said okay as a manifester and we're you know we're told that you're here to initiate inspire like take the first step but as a woman who wants to like be pers like I want to be courted like let's just make that clear like I want to yeah. be courted <laughs> love it um I want that energy give me all the romance you mm -hmm. know love it uh I said as someone who wants to be courted how does that look? Like, how do I do that as a manifester? And she gave me the most beautiful answer that just gave me so much permission. I love it. And I feel so good about it. She said, what you would do is you would initiate by showing that you're interested and then stepping back and letting them come in and take the lead, take the lead. Oh, I like that. So you can fit. Cause so you can verbally say, I'm really interested in getting to know you and then leave it. It could, it, it doesn't have to be like that. It could literally be like initiating a conversation. Gotcha. You're just like, Hey, what's that in that picture? Tell me about that. I, or yeah, whatever. I see the, I see the energy. I like the energy. I initiate conversation and then I receive. Gotcha. Then you step back to receive. Yeah. And if that made right, me so excited. Right. Yeah. Yes. Does it work? I haven't had a chance to try it yet. Okay, well, but I'm, I'm excited to see if this works. I will update everyone when and if that happens. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, I'm just I'm just very fascinated and also enthusiastic about just getting to know good people and currently I'm just enjoying the process. It's just been really lovely. Once I got out of my head, once I started to I like how I had to get to be where I was ready. I was really actively ready. Yeah. yeah. Whether, whether it's for six months, whether it's for a year, whether it's forever, I have no idea. You know, it sounds so cliche to say, and I say that as someone who thought it was so fucking cliche and I hated it so much when people told me this, you're not going to find love until you love yourself. 100%. I mean, and of course, it's not like you have to be a be the best at self love ever. It's yeah, more of just like, that's a that's a relationship. Like, I'm not going to stand for bullshit anymore. Like I'm not going to take the breadcrumbs. I'm not going to take inconsistency, like find a couple of things. It only has to be a few tiny little non negotiable things that can be part of your boundaries going forward of what you're seeking. So if you're seeking a bedmate, then make that fucking clear. It's all good. Like if you just yep. want to have, if you just want to have a significant person to just have sex with because that feels safe for you and that's just what you need at the moment, 
fucking go for it, you know? Get it, but do it respectfully. Right. Communication. As, as long as it's consenting adults communicating around the expectation that if one of us catches feels, we need to have that conversation. Otherwise, let's just enjoy some playful fun. And then you can have the next, and then the next person might be like, I'm over date. I like, I want a significant other. I want to be married. I want to like have a life with somebody. That's a very different approach to the sex. So the just wanting to have a bed mate. And then to the other person just saying, I'm just kind of looking for friends. I don't know exactly what I want. I'm not even sure I'm gay. I'm not even sure mm -hmm. like, you know, and I'm in an open, you know, whatever it is, but like, just be freaking clear about what, and it's okay. You can ask for anything you want. Just be clear with, and, and get consent from that person and get, and get clear on your expectations. But it's fluid. These like people are just doing their thing. It's just done with grace, respect, communication and expectations. Yes. Yes. Again, so well said, get out there, do it with confidence and just keep showing up. Be your freaking, be your best self. Like I challenge anybody today, if they haven't been on the apps in a while, or if they are, go change your profile to put exactly what you want in there. Just fucking write exactly what you want what you're not willing to give up and just be clear and see what happens. Yep. Make it so, so clear. And then when you have a conversation with the people who are coming into your inbox, who don't fucking read your the profile, <laughs> continue the clarity. Right. Hey, did you look at my profile? I was pretty clear in what I wanted. Oh, I just thought I'd like kind of just tell you that you're cute. You know what I mean? Like, do you want to hear something funny? What? Yes, I do. But what? I was telling my lovely guy friend this, this morning because we were talking about our dating profiles. We sent our bios to each other and he helps me with mine and I help him with his. That's cute. And uh, I sent him my screenshot of, of my updated bio because I'm tired of dudes messaging me or trying to match with me um, who clearly haven't read my bio. So I put in my bio as one of the prompts. It said, what is your personal hell? Like the prompt said, what is your personal hell? So I put as my personal hell is conservative Christian dudes who don't read bios. That's freaking epic. <laughs> and I love it because that is going to wipe out a whole genre of people that I'm annoyed by if they do read my bios. Um, or the couples who slide in where when I had a, oh. when I, I learned this really early on, like if I put it, uh, if I put a, a profile on there, it's like, you go, no couples, no poly, no ENM looking for monogamy. <laughs> like, you know, like you have to write all this and guess what? A couple will still slide in and be like, Hey, we'd love for you to be our unicorn. And I had to like, look that up. I will tell you I that is something as a bisexual woman whose dating profile is set oh, to God. to all genders that is something I constantly get and it's exhausting because or or a lot of times what's happening is women who are in their 30s 40s married open relationship and want to have a girlfriend and I'm just like bless you do your thing not here for it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that's fine because there's a ton of women who put ENM on their, you know, totally. or, poly or totally. And why do you have to reach? Why do you have to like reach out to me like, that says like, thanks no. for shooting your shot? Not here for it. No, no, no thanks for shooting your shot. I've told <laughs> you clearly what the hell. I mean, all my OG lessons are like, what the fuck are these dudes coming slide trying to slide in or put women, women, because mm -hmm. I don't even put any, I don't put all people. Like I literally just put women. Yeah. I don't want, I don't want a dick in my bed. <laughs> or in your inbox. Or in my inbox. 
that literally just, it's so annoying. There are so many other women who say they're poly and ENM slide into their DMs, like go yes. say hi on their profile. I literally say no to you. No, thank you. No, uh, no, more, no more of that, please. Fuck off, face, engaged. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man, I rip into them. Like, what the hell about my profile says yes to you? Like, for real. That's what I tell them. Uh, and they're like, oh, sorry. I'm like, no. not accepted. Delete block. Bye. I mean, I'm not on any of the apps now, but like when I am, that's, and all my other friends say the same shit. It's so lame. Or they, you know, like on Instagram, there's videos of people talking about that, which is just makes me laugh. Wow. Yep. Can anyone read a profile? Yeah, no, it's pretty annoying, especially for someone who loves to write and yes. read. Yes. To have people yeah. come on to dating apps. With the intention of dating and then not even read and write. That's why it makes you start to feel like it's just like grocery shopping for people. <laughs> like you're just, those people are just, that's the des desperation energy. Mm -hmm. They're just swiping right on everyone, everyone, everyone to see, exactly. to see who will land, who's going to open up and land for them. You know, that's the des desperation energy we're talking about. Like, yeah. what are you bringing? What are you bringing to the table? Just bring some, bring some consistency. Listen to me when I speak. I mean, I love the fact that, you know, you'll answer a question 10 texts ago because it mattered. Mm -hmm. It's like all those little things mean so much in the, in the big scheme of things, because you're not necessarily hanging out with that person day in and day out to understand those habits. So showing up in those small profound ways create a beautiful flowing foundation of I'll show up tomorrow. I'm like, now I'm really curious about how tomorrow's conversations are going to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just all cool. I don't know. It's, it's, it's been fascinating. I mean, it is a fucking mind shift and a mind fuck too at times, but Otherwise, yeah, it's just very fascinating. Do you know what your favorite word is? Fascinating. Fascinating. <laughs> it's a good this word. has been this has been a fascinating and interesting conversation with you. Well, when we talk within our lens, we have a really good time. And I like how we've both been doing this like Italian hand gesture while we're hey, speaking. Hey, hey, manja, more of this, please. <laughs> more of this. More and more. More and more. <laughs> more and more. We're talking about love. So, yeah, it'll be uh, fun. To yeah. all of our listeners out there, we hope you're having an amazing February of love, whether it's self love, mm -hmm. badass single love, yep. partner love, learning about love. Unlearning yeah. your narratives about love. However, right. love is showing up for you this month. Oh my God. Thank you oh for being God. here. Mic drop from River. That was perfect. <laughs> love, love you, friend. Love you too. Appreciate Bye. you. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode today, be sure to subscribe and share because what do we say, baby? Sharing is caring. <laughs>